welcome back to our series where we create a canonical story out of the Dragon Ball Z movies. Last time, we focused on Turles. If you haven't seen that yet, I recommend you clicking right up here and watching that first. We are continuing this series with the fourth DBZ movie. But before we get into it, I want to encourage you to subscribe today. And with that being said, let's do this. Last time, we left off with Turles coming to Earth. He explained about Goku and Piccolo, their alien origins, and ultimately killed off all the Z-Warriors except for Goku, Gohan, and Krillin. With both Piccolo and Kami dead, there is no hope for the Z-Warriors to ever be resurrected. Several months have passed. The Z-Warriors who had died have traveled to King Kai's in order to train. Goku has been taking this time to really bomb the sun and try to make up for lost time. Between Gohan's studies, the two enjoy camping, fishing, training, and many other activities similar. Bulma has been in deep research with her father, trying to find other planets that may have life. After the reveal that Goku was an alien, these two suspect the same for Piccolo. They hope to find another planet which may have a set of Dragon Balls. As they continue their search, Dr. Briefs finds a planet is on its way to crash right into Earth. It is quite strange because it moves a lot more like a meteor than a small planet. They talk about their options to get rid of it, but they can't destroy it simply because there's already life on that planet. From this discussion, it is decided that maybe some of the remaining Z-Warriors can shoot it off course. Bulma gets a hold of Goku and Krillin and the two race to blast the planet. They power up small Kamehameha waves and shoot them directly at the incoming planet. Both are shocked when their attacks do absolutely nothing. The planet comes into Earth's atmosphere and begins to cause destruction all around the planet. Many brace themselves for the end of the world, but the planet flies just past Earth and explodes. Bulma and Oolong watch as the planet's debris rains down as meteorites onto the Earth. From the planet's explosion, a giant spaceship known as a planet cruiser lands on Earth. The entrance of the large vehicle releases dozens of soldiers, and they claim the Earth in the name of Lord Slug. A crowd had formed, and they begin to laugh at the name of Lord Slug. After the people's reactions, the soldiers begin to fire on them. Bulma and Oolong see it all, unable to do anything to stop it. Inside the planet cruiser, the ruler known as Lord Slug sits upon a throne. He has been searching for a planet that would be just right to make his own set of Dragon Balls. Finally, this planet, Earth, is a perfect fit. The Namekian stands and conjures up a set of new Dragon Balls. They fly off into different directions around the planet. And some of his minions plan to go out across the Earth to gather them. They accidentally offend their master. He kills each of them with a single blast. After the attack from the soldiers, Lord Slug and some of his higher commanders exit the base. In spite of the looming danger, Bulma begins to question them about why they are here. What do they want? One replies to her that they will terror freeze the planet and making it a new hull for their planet cruiser. But before they can, they need to collect a few things. Bulma is confused by the last line. She wonders to herself what they might be looking for. Then Lord Slug gives the command to kill the girl and her pet pig. After that, the team can go and find the Dragon Balls. Bulma is in shock. She is about to die and they're looking for what? Dragon Balls? She can't help but to yell out, We have no Dragon Balls here. They were lost when our guardian passed away. Lord Slug laughs, silly girl. That's why we're here. Your guardian was an alien known as a Namekian, and I myself am one too. I've been looking for a planet that had previous Dragon Balls that could host my power into a new set of Dragon Balls. Now I have finally found my planet. Lord Slug quickly loses interest in the girl and reminds his soldiers of his execution command. With a last ditch effort to save her life, Bulma explains that they can't find the Dragon Balls without her. She is the only one who can make a Dragon Radar. She hopes that she can buy time to stop them and save her life. Without hesitation, Lord Slug reads Bulma's mind and is able to get the Dragon Radar. 
Immediately, Bulma falls asleep. He decides to take the girl and her pig captive. He believes that Bulma's intellect would be a great addition to his team of scientists. As Lord Slug's army goes throughout the Earth, searching for these new Dragon Balls, Goku and Krillin go to investigate the newly installed base. They find themselves fighting hordes of soldiers. Up top of the base, Lord Slug waits for his Dragon Balls and watches the fight below. He thinks to himself that these warriors would be valuable to his army. At that time, Bulma begins to wake from her short nap. She asks, what does a man like him need the Dragon Balls? What is one wish that is so important to him? Lord Slug laughs and explains that depending on the user, certain sets of Dragon Balls can have up to three different wishes. In fact, his new Dragon Balls have two. He is much stronger than the previous Guardian of Earth. Within an hour, his team is able to find them all. Goku and Krillin watch from below. Lord Slug conjures up his very own Shenron. Goku fights his way up to the top just as Lord Slug makes a wish for eternal youth. Goku tries to fight his way up, but is stopped by more hordes of soldiers. Bulma quickly calls out before the second wish is made to wish all those who were killed by Turles and his Crusher Corps to come back to life. Instinctively, Lord Slug hits Bulma and she goes flying off the top of the base. Goku is able to grab his unconscious comrade before she makes it to the ground. Now that the deceased Z-Warriors have been wished back, the entire group travels Snake Way, trying to make it back to King Yama. Kami himself waits at King Yama for the team to make their way back so he can bring them all to Earth, just as he had done prior with Goku. Lord Slug looks at Oolong and he tells his fighters to dispose of him. Before any of them can, he jumps off praying that Goku will save him too. Oolong is saved, but surprisingly it wasn't Goku. Gohan has arrived, riding his favorite pet dragon, Icarus. As the battle ensues below, Lord Slug's team begins the process of terra-freezing the planet. It even allows for his soldiers to begin to breathe on Earth. Without Goku and Krillin knowing, Gohan finds himself joining the battle. He is able to keep up for quite a while with the soldiers, but finally, he is overwhelmed. Out of nowhere, Piccolo appears to save the child. Lord Slug's higher soldiers decide to get involved. The larger fighter known as Dorodabo takes on Piccolo, while the fighter Metamacha takes on Gohan. Unfortunately for Dorodabo, he is no match for Piccolo's new power, and he is easily defeated. As for Gohan, Metamacha overpowers him quickly. He is no problem for this seasoned fighter. Piccolo rushes to Gohan's aid, only to be stopped by Anguilla coming up from the ground and grabbing his legs. But even that has little effect as Piccolo is able to save Gohan from an attack. Goku and Krillin finally are able to shake off the other warriors. He sees his own son on the battlefield. They quickly make their way over. Goku enters the battle with the two opponents, but like many of Goku's previous adversaries, they are simply no match for him. Goku takes him out with ease before Krillin even needs to enter the battle. Lord Slug enters. Even though Goku can tell that he is a much more powerful warrior than the others, he quickly launches into an extensive battle with the leader. In little time, Lord Slug gets the upper hand on his opponent. Goku finds himself simply trying to avoid the Namekian's attacks, but even then, Goku has a hard time doing that. Goku decides that the only thing left he can do is to use his trump card, the Spirit Bomb. But unfortunately, with the Earth partially frozen over due to the Terra Freeze, there is little to no energy that he can get. Krillin enters the fray, but he is no match for the Planet Conqueror. Goku is lost in his own desperation. What does he do? How will he be able to save everyone this time? Within a matter of seconds, the idea of him losing everyone playing through his head over and over. Lord Slug throws a punch, but unlike before, his opponent catches it. From deep within Goku, he finds a rage like never before consuming him. A yellow aura surrounds him, and Goku suddenly finds that he has a power unlike ever before. Without thinking, he is blinded by rage. Goku begins to conquer Lord Slug. 
This beatdown continues until Lord Slug reveals that he is like Piccolo a Namekian. This thought shocks Goku and brings him out of his uncontrollable rage. Lord Slug begins to grow huge. King Kai quickly speaks to Goku about how Lord Slug is one of Piccolo's kind, a Namekian, but even worse, he is a Super Namekian. Slug may be the last of his kind. He explains that Super Namekians can use abilities from both the Dragon Clan, like making Dragon Balls, and from the Warrior Clan. Before he can continue, Goku's concentration is lost as Lord Slug goes on the attack. After a much needed rest, Piccolo arises he decides to team up with his arch nemesis to fight one of his own kind. Piccolo grows large himself and the two begin to duke it out. Piccolo is easily weaker than the other Namekian, but it gives Goku a little time to recover. Piccolo continues to lose. Eventually, he goes back to his normal size and is crushed in the hands of his enemy. Piccolo is able to reach Goku and gives him the last of his power. Goku uses the Kaioken and he launches off towards Lord Slug. As his opponent comes towards him, Lord Slug is able to sense the energy that Goku has is coming from Piccolo. Finally, the two rivals have put their differences aside and make the world a better place. Goku flies up and goes right through Lord Slug. The Namekian falls into its own base, causing it to erupt in multiple explosions. But that isn't the end. As Goku flies up to destroy the device that is causing the terror freeze, Lord Slug grabs him and follows him up. Goku smashes through the dark clouds that blanket the earth. It allows him to gain just enough energy from the sun to throw a quick yet powerful spirit bomb at his enemy. It knocks Lord Slug into the terror freeze device and it blows him up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This wasn't nearly as complex as some of the other ones, especially the last one. I was able to keep a lot of the same things in the movie, but made few minor changes. First, I got rid of the whistling part. I have never liked that. And so I just got creative on how we were going to take him out. I had to figure out a reason for Lord Slug coming to this planet since there were no Dragon Balls. And so I just decided that we were going to allow him to be able to make Dragon Balls similar to Dende to be able to have two wishes and therefore we could bring some of those Z-Warriors back. Which also led to creating my own definition of a Super Namekian. One that can use the power of both the, the Dragon and the Warrior Clans. Next time we'll be exploring the Cooler movie. This movie is one I've been waiting for a long time to get to. Honestly, it's probably one of the, the main ones since the beginning of this that I really wanted to tackle. So I'm really excited about that. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, show it by hitting that like button. And hey, you know what? We'll see you guys next time.